If you look around on the streets these days, you'll see cars with styling cues from past decades. And on the sidewalks, you'll see photographers carrying gear that looks like it's from the 60s or 70s. The Nikon DF may look like a camera from days gone by, but make no mistake, under the hood, there's a modern, powerful feature set. And the DF fits beautifully in Nikon's camera lineup. Ever since the first announcement, I've heard quite a few photographers talking really excitedly about the new Nikon DF because of how much it looks like the classic Nikon FE film camera. There's no question that the nostalgic looks of this DSLR are great, but I'm really happy to report that in spite of the aesthetic tribute to popular cameras of the past, the DF beautifully fuses the past with the present. Maybe that's what the DF stands for, digital fusion. Whether you're interested in this camera for its good looks or its image capturing performance, you won't be disappointed. It's got the same image sensor, processor, and ISO range as the top of the line D4. It's a 16.2 megapixel full frame CMOS sensor. It has the Xspeed 3 image processor and the impressive ISO range goes from 50 to 204,800 expanded and native 100 to 12,800. Obviously though, there are a number of reasons it's not just a D4 in a different body. The DF focusing system is a 39 point phase detection autofocus system. The burst shooting rate is 5.5 frames a second and there's no video recording with the DF, just stills. And here's an interesting feature of the DF. On the lens mounting ring, it has a metering coupling lever that flips back out of the way. That means that this camera is compatible with even more lenses, like older non-AI lenses. And while you can connect an MCDC2 remote release cord to the accessory terminal, the shutter button is center threaded to accept old school remote release cables as well. Let's have a look around the camera. As you're holding the DF in shooting position, the dial stack on the left is the exposure compensation dial on top, and the ISO dial down below. I like that even the extended range ISO values are right there on the ISO dial. And the quality look and feel of these dials, as well as the separate locks for each dial, are just classy. And Nikon realizes that Japanese built cameras and lenses have a great reputation for build quality, so they even printed Made in Japan right on the top of the camera, as well as on the bottom. On the right side is a dial for shutter speed, that has good natural stopping detents, all the way from the bulb mode position up to 1 4,000th of a second. But the T position, that stands for extended time exposures, or the X position, and that stands for flash sync, or the 1 3rd step positions, the shutter speed dial locks. And you'll need to hold down the lock release to turn the dial away from any one of those positions. That 1 3rd step position is where you put the camera if you want to control the shutter speed digitally with the command dial here on the back. At the base of that same dial is the release mode dial that lets you choose to snap single shots, continuous low, continuous high, quiet shots, use the self timer, or shoot with the mirror up to limit vibration. The old school on off dial surrounds the shutter button and to the far right is the four position mode dial that has program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority, and manual positions. And you just pull that dial up in order to rotate it. When you look at the back of this camera, if you're familiar with Nikon DSLRs at all, things will seem very familiar. The menus look and work like other Nikon DSLRs, and the multi-selector in the live view on the 921,000 dot, 3.2 inch LCD, are what we're used to as well. If you saw my review of the D7100, you know that I like Nikon's new I button that lets you change various settings right on screen. And this camera has that I button. And with the customization of buttons, menus, custom shooting banks, and custom settings banks, you can pretty much set up this camera to behave just the way that you want 
with super quick access to the things that you care about most. So with that in mind, let me share with you one workaround that I programmed in because this is how most users will adjust things to quickly access their favorite settings. On most Nikon DSLRs since the introduction of Auto ISO, there is some sort of quick access to turning on Auto ISO without a trip to the menus. Because the DF has an ISO dial, there's no ISO button. But I was surprised that there's no Auto ISO position on that dial, so that you do have to go to the menus for Auto ISO. Instead, I just reprogrammed the preview button and I can quickly toggle the Auto ISO on and off. The only thing I couldn't figure out was how to quickly format my SD card without a trip to the setup menu. On many Nikon DSLRs, you can press and hold a two-button combination to quickly format your memory card. Since that's not available on the DF, I was going to reprogram the function button or the customizable My Menu, but that just doesn't seem to be an option. The only menu item in the whole menu system you can't put into My Menu or reprogram onto a button is the Format Card function. The DF captures beautiful, crisp images with the 50mm f1.8 Special Edition lens that's part of the kit I tested. The colors are beautiful and low light, low noise performance is quite good, as you'd expect. At the time of this review, Adobe Camera Raw for Photoshop and Lightroom, as well as Apple Aperture, don't yet recognize RAW files from the DF. But updates for new cameras never take too long, so I'm expecting that update any day now. And while I normally shoot in RAW plus JPEG for maximum versatility and the best possible image quality, until there's a camera RAW update, I'm shooting in TIFF so that I have higher quality images than JPEGs to work with. There's a lot more to this camera than I can cover here, but I want to touch on a few more random things that'll be interesting to people who are considering this camera. The body is weather sealed to about the same degree as the D800. The grip feels great and the size and weight of the camera adds to the first class quality feel. As somebody who's used to working with command and sub-command dials, menus, and the multi-selectors of all the modern DSLRs, I was a little concerned that the retro dials might be distracting or uncomfortable. I was worried that Nikon might sacrifice state-of-the-art ergonomics just to make the camera look a little better. Well, that wasn't the case at all. People loved their old Nikon FE cameras because they were great, well-designed cameras. And getting used to the placement of the various controls takes very little effort, even if you've never shot with anything but the latest bodies. The camera can capture bracketed sets of two, three, or five images. There's no built-in flash, but the low-light performance of this camera is amazing and you'll need flash in far fewer low light situations. Then if you mount a Nikon compatible speed light on the hot shoe, you do have quick one button plus command dial access to flash settings like red eye reduction, front or rear curtain sync, and flash exposure compensation. Speaking of flash, there's a cap on the front of the camera just above the lens release button for a PC connection cable. There's a USB and HDMI connection port, and on the bottom, is an old school latch for access to the battery and the single SD card slot. And while the battery is a small form factor ENEL14A battery, Nikon says you can click off an impressive 1400 shots per charge. I didn't have time to test it myself. This camera is an impressive, well-built, full-featured, full-frame modern camera that'll serve the needs of young shooters as well as longtime shutter bugs. The beautiful retro styling will be especially appealing to most buyers, and it doesn't get in the way of those modern functions. But if you want to minimize the retro look while keeping all the features and functions that make this such a great camera, have a look at the all-black Nikon DF instead of the silver and black one I have here. Personally, I like this one. For B&H and Kelby Training, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, 
automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year, or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.